Welcome back to Animator Artist Life. In this small series, we're going to learn how to crack, shatter, and smash the hell out of things, all with no plugins. In this first video, we'll cover the different shatter types and its settings, then we'll smash a car through a wall, and in the third, we'll create a cinematic shot with multiple destructions of a bridge. Hey, so in this first video, before we go on to break and blow things up, we're just going to go over the basic settings of the shatter tool in Maya. So we need to open up our effects panel, which is under this menu set up here. Click on the little panel up here, down to effects, and it'll open up and change your menu settings across the top. Now we need to go over to effects, and down to shatter, and the little box, and open the settings, and it'll bring up our panel for our create shatter effects options. So I'm gonna reset the settings just so that we're back to default. And what you've got here is you've got three different shatter types, and we're gonna quickly go through all three. We've got surface shatter, solid shatter, and crack shatter. So the first one is the surface shatter, and I'm going to do this on our sphere. So I'm gonna select the sphere, and I what we, what we've got here is we've got our name, surface shatter. You can give this a name if you want. And we've got our shard count. This is how many fragments we're going to get. So if you only want to split it in half, you put two right up. You can overblow it. It says seven here. You can go up and put, you know, 80 in if you want. The tool isn't too reliable all the time and it does crash sometimes. So we need to keep this at a realistic settings. Um, for just this demo anyway, we'll keep this to five at the default. And I'm just going to also go to here, original surface, and I'm going to want to hide it. So when it creates our shatter, it's going to hide our original object. It's over here in our outliner under P sphere one. So let's just run this and see what we get. I'm gonna click apply. And as you can see, it's done absolutely nothing because there is a really important thing we have to do to get the shatter tool to work. We have to delete history and freeze transforms before we do anything. As, as you can see over here, I've still got my history and it's um, you can see the transform, the X is at 32.5. So you select the sphere or any object that you've got and we need to go up to edit, delete by type, and then history and that will clear out the history or you can hit this little button up here, clear history, and we also need to freeze the transforms now. So we've got rid of our history, but we still can see the transforms is offset. So now we need to go up to modify and then freeze transformations, or you can click this little button under the poly modeling set. And now that we've got that, we should be able to get this to work. So let's see what happens. Let's select this again. We've got our shard count on five and we've also got triangulate on this is quite important because you want to be able to triangulate the surface so you get nice diagonal cuts as well and hide and let's run this i'm going to click apply and there you go it's run it let's just zoom in on our sphere and see what we've got so i'm going to hit the w for our move key and you can see we have our pieces and there should be five just as we've set up here there they are there you go so that's as easy as it is to shatter that. So let's have a look at some of the other settings. And as you can see over here, we chose to hide our original sphere. It's here, if I hit Shift H, it comes back. So it, it sort of creates a copy of it and then shatters that. So you can either delete the original to start again or press undo. So let's have a little look at some of these other settings for our um, surface shatter options. Select it again. Now I'm going to um, select our extrude shards. Now what this does is it gives a little bit of thickness to um, our extrusion. So let's try something like, um, uh, let, let, let's put in five or something like that and run it again. Click apply and there you go. It's actually given it some thickness. If I move this away you can see each piece has got some thickness. And you'll also notice that every time you run it, the cut is different. So you don't get too much control over where the um, lines are going. Um, but you can mess around and get this, you know, and, and just keep trying trial and error to get different effects. And you've also got your seed. Every, if you change the seed number, you'll get different, the cuts will be different. It'll choose a different um, um, algorithm and different math to come up with those cuts. So let's have a look at some of the other settings quickly as well. So we've got the shard count. Let's try going up, up one to see what we get. I'm gonna um, get rid of the extrude and I'm gonna say, put this up to 10. And I'm going to, we've got triangulation, um, hide shards again, and let's click apply. And there you go. So now we've got more 
more pieces. We got our 10 pieces that we've chosen. There you go, there's a little one there actually as well. So there you go, you can get some nice, you know, nice effects with this. It works pretty well, you know, like I said, it does crash a little bit. But let's now go on to the next option, which is solid shatter. So the solid shatter in Maya is different to the surface shatter um, as opposed to it fills in the gaps. It actually gives you volume and shapes like brick and rubble. Um, it's probably the one that you're going to use the most to be honest as well. So let's go over to the solid shatter tab to see the settings. I'm going to reset the settings and I'm also going to do this. I'm going to demonstrate this on this wine glass model and I'm going to make sure that we've freeze our transforms and deleted all the history. So let's see what we've got just straight off the bat with five shards and obviously we want to hide our original. We've got triangulate surface as before and I've also got this little checkbox here, apply it interior material. What that does is it applies its own material to, to the edge, to the filling for you. So let's see what that looks like. Let's click apply and there you go, it's run. So let's just select some of these pieces and you can see that when I move them away, you do have this sort of, um, this, this solid, shape this fill in between um, and it's, it's really good so you know this is going to be so useful for when we sort of end up smashing through a wall or breaking a bridge or a building um, as you can see at the moment the edges are very sort of flat and sharp which brings us to our next uh, next setting which is the edge jagginess so I'm going to delete the solid shatter I'm going to bring back the wine glass with shift H and let's run this again. So I'm going to give this a little bit of edge jagginess. Now you want to be careful with this. You don't need too much. So let's just try um, something like 0.2 and let's see what that gives us. Just a bit of trial and error. Let's click apply. And there you go. What you can see, if I zoom in, you can see it's actually started making the edge a, a, a bit jaggy. Now if I pull this apart, it's actually applied that to the inside as well. It's got this sort of um, surface detail going on. It's, it's, it's not too thick at the moment, so you can't see it that much. But let's just open this up again. As you can see, so that was, that was 0.2. Let's try a little bit more jagginess. I'm going to delete, delete it again. Bring back the original wine glass is the quickest way. So let's just up this to something like 0.5 to see the difference in jaggedness. And I'm also going to run this on the sphere instead because I want you to see how far the solid that it goes all the way through when you use the solid shatter. So let's click apply. And there you go. So let's just have a look at these pieces. And when you move them away, you can see how jagged they are inside. So it's a really nice little extra effect. Um, one of the word of warning is if you start going up to 0 0.8, 0 0.9, it does tend to crash Maya. It's it's a little bit unstable so just use it with caution and use it with decent geometry so I'm just going to hide this and I also want to just demonstrate um, as you can see um, let me just undo that that the topology we've got quite a lot of subdivisions on here now you can use the shatter without any subdivisions say if you were on a cube but it is better to subdivide the mesh first because you do get better topology so let's demonstrate this with a simple cube I'm going to create a cube I'm going to scale it up let's just move it over here and I'm going to delete history and freeze the transforms just to see this work. Let's turn the edge jaggedness off for now. We don't need this now. Down to zero. And let's just run this with um, with a shard count of five. Okay, so you can see the topology here. What it's done is it's, obviously we've got triangulate, so you get these huge long triangles. Um, let me just turn on wireframe on shaded so you can see everything that's going on. And you can see the topology that it creates here. It has to sort of, it has to triangulate the inside, of the, but the triangles on the sides and the outside are, are massive. So let me just, um, un, let me just uh, delete this and go back to, let's just bring back our cube. And this time we are going to, oh, I've deleted the history. So we just have to create a new cube because I, I need the history on it. So let's just um, uh, create a brand new cube, bring this over to here. And now I want to subdivide it. So let's just give this sort of like 10 subdivisions um, in all axes. And I'm going to delete the history, freeze the transforms again. And now let's run it again and see what the difference in the, in the topology we get. So let's just run this. And there you go. So as you can see, that's a lot cleaner than having really long triangles and stuff. This is better for simulation when we sort of destruct and blow things up with dynamics. And you can see that's a lot cleaner. The algorithm doesn't have to create so many big long triangles. It's a lot nicer, a lot cleaner and a lot easier to use. So now I want to show you how we can change this interior material to one of our own. 
So as we chose the option to apply interior material in our create shatter effect options, it has given us this interior material that is just a yellow. Let me turn off wireframe on shaded for now so we can see it easier. So every time we shatter the solid, we get this um, interior material. Um, you know, you can turn this off or on, but it is pretty useful because if you're say, for example, doing some brick or rubble, you could then apply a different material to the inside. So where does this material come from? So what we do is that let me just close this down, we don't need this anymore. I am going to open up our hypershade and let's see what it's given us. So click this little button up here, it's just come on my other screen, so let me just move this over for you. And there it is. So as you can see in my materials, there's some materials I've created, but it's automatically created this one called Shatter Interior. Let me just graph the network and you can see it here. Let me open up this. Okay, so as you can see, it gives us this um, yellow material. And, and you can go into the properties and just change this to whatever you want. So I could, as you can see, it changes and updates live. You can see the color changing. But what happens if we want to sort of give it our own different material? We might be using um, a different renderer. We might be sort of wanting to give it like a brick effect, a marble effect on the inside, whatever we want. So if, say, for example, let's create our own material. Let's create a Maya, um, Blin, and let's just call this sort of inside material for now. And I'm gonna give this, uh, you know, a color, let's say just a green for now. And I wanna apply it to everything on the inside, but I don't wanna affect the outside. What you do is you um, roll over the shatter interior material that it gave us and go select objects with material. And what it's done is it's selected all the faces that have got the interior material. And now we can just right click and assign material to viewport selection. And now we have our own shader, whether that be you know your V-Ray shader, your Redshift, um, Arnold, whatever. We've got our own shader on the, on the inside now. So say for example, let's just go sort of noise or something. And just remove this so we can you know uh, bring up our, our other Maya shaders. Let's go 2D texture and say noise. And I might say, want to plug this into the color slot. And there you go. I'll just move the hypershade off so we can see. So it's quite easy to sort of just replace their default material. If you don't choose the um, option when you shatter to apply interior material, then you will literally have to go in and select all these faces by hand and, and, and give them a different material. So in some situations, it is really useful and it, it's a quite a nice little utility, useful thing to use. Okay, so that's that, it's very easy to do. Now let's go on to our, our last shatter effect, the crack shatter effect, and then we are done before we go on to um, some new scenes where we sort of blow things up and um, do some interesting scenes. So we're back to a clean scene, a clean example for this last example. So I'm gonna hide these, we don't need these anymore. I'm gonna select my plane, hit the F key um, to zoom in, and I'm going to just change the subdivisions just, just down for now, something like 24, just to make things run quicker. Um, just a little note that this last example, the crack shatter, let's click on the tab to run it, and it actually runs without actually freezing the transforms or the history, so it's something um, noting. I mean, I'm gonna do it anyway just to be safe, just to let things run smooth, but just so you know it does run without it. So we're on the crack shatter, I'm going to reset the settings just in case, take away the edge jaggedness, and obviously I wanna hide the um, original surface. So let's go with five, and the way this one works is that you pick a vertex or a vertice, so let's say something like this, and then you run it and you'll see it go through and sort of cut its way through um, picking um, a random algorithm. So let's just see this run, and there you go. So you can use this for sort of uh, maybe glass shattering effect. I mean, I don't know how often you know you would use this crack shatter, but it might come in useful like for glass, things like that. Um, let's just try a little bit of jaggedness now. So I'm just gonna um, delete this one, and I'm going to bring back our plane. And let's try this with a bit of jaggedness now. So let me choose another vertex, something like here. And let's add a little bit of jaggedness. Let's go something like 0.1. As I say, you don't need much at all. And let's click Apply. And there you go, it sort of cuts it around. It's adding a little bit more, a little bit more jaggedness, a little bit more interest to the edges now. Obviously, if you have a higher res mesh, if you use higher subdivisions, you will get a better result. And let's let, let this run through. Or you can also use the seed value here again, remember, to try, try different formations. There you go. So you can see it's sort of giving it a little bit of jaggedness to the edge. So let's just have a look at these pieces. 
Um, let's bring this one up and down. So you can see it's sort of, you know, giving us some interesting um, interesting looks and things there. I don't know how much you'll use it, but you know, you might be able to use it for say something like, let's just pick this one and say, um, extrude it. Let's extrude this up. And you, know, and you might sort of want to use this for creating stylized rough landscapes, for example. Let's just um, extrude this one up again. You know, so you might find a use for it. It may be good for like shattering glass or something like this, just stylized landscapes. Um, there you go, I hope that was really useful. There is one more setting called Link to Shards, which I haven't used yet. Um, basically, it sort of, it creates connections from the original surface to the shards, and it like lets you control things like the visibility um, of the original surface. So you might want to sort of look in the documentation to sort of find out more about that if it's interesting. And the verbose mode will sort of give you command line, give you, um, um, show you sort of the scripting behind it, which you don't really need. So there you go, I hope that was really useful. Now that we understand the basic settings, we've gone through surface shatter, solid shatter, and crack shatter. Now that we understand those, we're gonna go on to some interesting animated VFX scenes. We're gonna sort of get a wall and we're gonna smash through it with a ball or even a car, something like that. And then we're gonna go on to um, a bigger scene. We're gonna smash an out, out of control airplane into a bridge and have multiple collisions. Um, exploding. It's going to be really exciting. So I hope you enjoy this basic video and then move on to the more advanced videos with me. And if you have enjoyed this, if you can give it a like, um, share and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.